All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sadko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a whole bunch of good crypto news stuff for you today. And the first thing I want to talk about is that John McAfee's fleeing the U.S. for alleged crypto tax fraud. Uh, again? I guess it's been a while since I got to talk about John McAfee in the channel, and uh, every time, it's it's never a dull moment. Um, so the former anti-virus tycoon and cryptocurrency advocate John McAfee says he's got problems with the U.S. tax agency. Yeah, I mean, uh, it makes sense with John McAfee, uh, the IRS. So McAfee uh, recently explained in a video that he was charged with using cryptocurrencies and criminal acts. Again... Not particularly surprising, John McAfee, <clears throat> by the Tennessee court officials. McAfee also detailed the tour. Uh, the four members of his 2020 presidential campaign have also been charged with unspecified charges of a felonious nature. Again, none of it's surprising. And his wife as well. I have not paid taxes for eight years, and I have made no secret of it. Well, there you go, John McAfee. So they want to silence me, and I will not allow that, McAfee continued. I think they just want their taxes. I'm not sure. I'm running my campaign in exile on this boat for the duration, and I will not allow them to imprison me and shut my voice down, which they will do immediately. Why? I'm a flight risk, obviously. I am in flight, McAfee remarked. Uh, or, or because you owe probably millions of dollars in taxes. Either way. Either way, McAfee. One of the two. You know what I mean? One of the two. You're either a flight risk because... Uh, taxes or you just owe the taxes what are the two uh you know we all don't like paying taxes mcafee you're not the only one uh, the infamous cryptocurrency per moment has been uh, known for being brutally honest and makes statements about digital currencies nearly every day and also makes a lot of money doing it mcafee's video also refers to prior statements concerning taxation such as the first week of january when he told his 890,000 twitter followers that he refuses to pay taxes to the government Candidate also says he was a prime target for the IRS and seemingly dared the agency to come after him, saying, here I am. McAfee further stated that taxation is illegal, and he's paid tens of millions already and received jack in services. Yeah, I'm, well, I mean, I guess if you're that rich, uh, you know, that you're paying tens of millions in, in, in taxes, you're, you're probably not going to receive too much because you probably don't need too much. But taxes make your schools and, and, and hospitals and, and your roads and everything else that you use. Have you ever driven on a road, McAfee? There you go. There's your services. Have you ever turned on your, your electricity or uh, that might be be subsidized and might have potentially a private but you know what i'm saying guys you guys know what i'm saying i mean sure uh, income tax is a pain but i mean come on schools and hospitals and stuff it's it's probably pretty good at least in that and in, in your military defending your nation and things like that but uh I, I get it i get it mcafee i know i'm done making money and i've lived off the cash from mcafee incorporated and my net income is negative um so he's trying to run for president as well in his campaign. Don't vote for John McAfee. This is him on his boat. And I watched a little video uh, the other day on his Twitter. He says, every so often and very rarely a clash of old and new cultures brought about by technology changes civilization. Cryptocurrencies is one of these technologies. It's probably the most dramatic to have occurred in human history since the invention of fire. Um, I don't know. Uh, the car and uh, let's see. Um, then there's also the Luddites that uh, didn't like, uh, what is that, like, the loom or whatever you know the cotton loom or whatever uh so there's a lot of technology i don't think cryptocurrency has changed uh humanity that much but uh, maybe in, maybe in the future who knows uh but uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that because cryptocurrencies free the individual from the yoke of the currency controlled by governments. He says governments will not be able to collect taxes when everyone is using privacy coins, which is kind of true. I mean, I guess if you're trading them on an exchange, then you're trading them based on your name and your KYC that you signed up. And therefore, sure. Yeah, you're going to get taxed for that. But uh, yeah, if everybody's using uh, privacy coins like Monero or Vail, Grin, Beam, um, then the government's not going to know about it because it's going to be very hard to track those. It seems from prior statements and photos on Twitter earlier this week that McAfee may be on his way to Venezuela. However, McAfee will not reveal his geographic location and stands, intends on staying on the boat for two years. The businessman believes he could obtain enough fuel and has the fishing skills to stick with it for quite some time on the run. And probably millions of dollars to ship food and everything he needs to his boat. So probably not just, you know, eating fish uh, like a normal person would. Um, it's John McAfee. Come on. Billions of dollars are going to be going towards that boat. This is, you know, it's not like a tiny little boat. 
Uh, moving on to the next article here, Bitcoin exchanges don't need money. Transmitter license in Pennsylvania. So this is kind of big. In a memo titled Money Transmitter Act Guidance for Virtual Currency Business, the Pennsylvania Dobbs clarified that the Money Transmitter Act, MTA, did not apply to crypto exchanges. The clarification focused on the precise definitions encompassed in the MTA, which focused on what constitutes money and when is an MTA license required. So according to the member, uh, cryptocurrencies do not constitute legal tender, at least in Pennsylvania, which uh, is really confusing because uh, just across the state uh, in Ohio, uh, they accept money for business taxes. Thus, uh, businesses involved in the transfer of cryptos do not need to obtain an NTA. So let me guess, uh, there's probably going to be some exchanges that will pop up in uh, Pennsylvania uh, because uh, then you just won't need a license and they'll be unlicensed and uh, they'll probably be terrible exchanges. Furthermore, Section 2 of the MTA explicitly mentions the transfer of money for a free or other form of consideration. Since cryptos do not constitute money, the Pennsylvania Dobbs says businesses involved in transmitting virtual currencies don't need the MTA. So these platforms never directly handle fiat currency. Any fiat currency paid by or to a user is maintained in a bank account in the platform's name at a depository institution. Under the MTA, these platforms are not money transmitters. The platform will never directly handle fiat currency, transact virtual currency settlements for the users, and facilitate the change in ownership of virtual currencies for the users. So... If you were to have a uh, web-based exchange in Pennsylvania, uh, apparently uh, the MTA does not apply. But I would imagine that if you were in Pennsylvania and you had an exchange that transferred fiat to you, like a U.S. dollar to uh, Bitcoin, then it would apply and you would need to get a license for that. So, um, yeah, I'm going to call it now. <clears throat> Then in the next few months or by the end of the year, there's going to be a couple exchanges in Pennsylvania uh, that will just handle uh, crypto to crypto transactions uh, because then they won't need a license for it. Hey, and then nobody has to pay. Um, but moving on uh, to a lesser article here, Australian Bitcoin exchange My Crypto Wallet has bank accounts shut. So the user funds are stuck. So if you have a My Crypto Wallet, you're not going to be able to get your funds out of there. So it's an Australian Bitcoin and crypto exchange, which launched in late 2017, and informed the users the other day that due to the NAB, the National Australia Bank, closing their accounts without notice, user withdrawals are currently disabled. However, you can deposit uh, to the exchange, but you just can't withdraw from the exchange, which makes no sense whatsoever. So they say, this is not the first time one of the big four banks has closed our business and bank account. It's a common problem within the industry. Unfortunately, due to the size and influence of institutions such as the NAB, they often get away with this kind of un um, unethical and unprofessional behavior. We'll do everything in our power to challenge them on this issue because their actions not only affect us as a business, but you as a customer. <clears throat> and they uh, basically uh, encourage you to go to the NAB and file a complaint on why they have seized funds. So uh, anybody in Australia with my crypto wallet, uh, maybe contact the NAB and ask them why you can't get your funds out um, and cause a little ruckus and maybe they'll stop. You know what I'm saying? The NASDAQ CEO predicts Bitcoin could be the global currency of the future. So kind of a good bullish remark from the NASDAQ CEO. Uh, NASDAQ CEO is bullish on crypto as we play the game of tug of war between crypto and regulators. Institutional investors are keeping an open eye. Delayed decisions by the SEC on just about everything from the status of ICOs to Bitcoin ETFs hasn't aided the progress. And as we move into 2019, the U.S. government shutdown paralyzes the SEC even further. And it's likely that uh, more key projects will be delayed. However, despite the slow start to the year and oversold market conditions, the NASDAQ CEO is still bullish on Bitcoin. As number one, uh, NASDAQ's number one was preparing to head to Davos, she made several key predictions beyond more unicorn IPOs on the horizon, AI coming uh, into its own. She, she paid particular tribute to crypto. Uh, ten years after the in initial invention of Bitcoin, crypto as a whole has gone through its first phase of classic invention life cycle. This is marketed, uh, marked by the early pioneers, the ascending hype as it uh, reaches the masses, a spike of onboarding, and then a dose of reality. And what comes next, she argues, will define the way forward for crypto. It will either find a practical utility and weave into the fabric of our economy, or it won't. <laughs> either way, right? It'll go up or it won't. Uh, it'll fail to achieve mass adoption due to its limited applications. So in terms of the uh, whole institutionalization of crypto, uh, I'm not a big fan of that just because I feel like crypto should be uh, just for the people and by the people kind of thing and not really necessarily institutions or corporatized. But I think it's inevitable wherever the money goes, the, the corporations, the institutionalization is going to come. So uh, if anything, I just kind of lay down and uh, 
rest and sort of take it uh, because uh, it's going to happen either way. So eh, might as well happen sooner than later. Um, so moving on, why Japan is the crypto capital of the world? So it does kind of seem that, uh, you know, uh, South Koreans and Japanese really highly value their crypto. And typically on Japanese exchanges, Korean exchanges, they're worth a lot more. And uh, that's why crypto um, coin market cap actually had to remove all the South Korean exchanges because the, they brought up the average for the rest of the world. So the enthusiasm for crypto on the island is massive with supermarkets that you can use Bitcoin at and even cars you can buy with digital money. The market is huge. And many have reported that there are around a million users of Bitcoin in the nation alone, which is an amazing statistic, especially as Bitcoin is in its infancy. Not only that, according to the largest data from the FSA, more than 190 companies have entered the country's digital currency market. And these figures are huge, as has been shown in global statistics for the uh, cryptocurrency investment, going on figures from Token Insight, Dare from the US dollar and Euro, and exchanges supporting the yen and pound account for more than 15%. You can see the Japanese, uh, the, the yen accounts for quite a bit of all the um, actual purchased uh, crypto in the world. And then I think the uh, KW, uh, KRW is a Korean one. Uh, but you can see the U.S. And the, and the Euro dominate it quite a bit. But uh, Japan, it looks to be in a close uh, third place there, maybe. Um, either way, to the British pound. Uh, the graph clearly shows a huge impact Japan on the, on the market with the number set to rise and rise. And uh, they are without a doubt the largest nation in Asia, but what has made the, the Jap uh, Japanese fall in love with digital currency so much. So uh, they're definitely not the largest nation in Asia. Uh, I don't know who wrote that. They're, they're not. They're not the largest nation in Asia. But because they like crypto so much, kind of the largest crypto nation, I suppose, right? So a prominent viewpoint points to the failings of the Japanese banking systems. Economic growth has stagnated for a long time in Japan, and many banks are on the verge of bankruptcy, which has forced many to look at other means of holding and using their currency. And the government has also become more open to crypto compared to the other uh, regional nations in the continent they hope to establish a set of monetary system independent or u.s regulation uh, through uh, of u.s regulation through the digital currency revitalize the status of the nation has become at the whims of the dollar and restricted by u.s securities and exchange commission and also japan uh, highly values regulation on their exchange as well if you apply as an exchange and you don't meet all of their criteria criteria you cannot be an exchange in japan and uh, they, they constantly remove exchanges um, and sort of de-license them um, throughout history here uh, if they're not even close to being uh, regulated. So uh, Japan, interesting. Um, you know, I think their, their culture, too, it kind of makes a lot of sense with crypto in the sense that they have like sort of a gamification culture. Um, you know, if you've ever been to Japan, there's a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of uh, like game rooms, um, a lot of like uh, little arcade places and gambling and things like that, and uh, which is kind of perfect for for crypto to be totally honest, because people love uh, the gamification of their crypto in terms of like you know like even like BitConnect and, and Genesis Mining and all these little uh, pyramid schemes that pop up and stuff like that. People don't value their crypto like they value money. If you have thirty bucks in Ethereum, oh well, I can spend that right because if I don't have that Ethereum anymore, it's no big loss, right? So they end up gambling it. And uh, not saying that all Japanese are gamblers, but uh, they do have a, sort of a gamification uh, money culture, um, you know, in a lot of places around, you know, in Tokyo and other major cities. Uh, but moving on uh, to coin market cap here, 120 billion market cap, haven't gone nowhere, actually 119 now. Uh, and now we have a mix of red and green. And uh, so some things kind of pumping, of course, Bitcoin cash pumping for absolutely no reason. Um, and uh, waves pumping for basically no reason as well, but uh, up 12.89%. That, that good old waves pumps came out of nowhere, huh? 3582 uh, Bitcoin, so down like about 20 bucks since the yesterday's uh, video as well. So not uh, not too big of a difference there. So up and down, coins are all over the place. They're lit, bro, JR business style. And uh, before we end today, I would like to thank three new Patreon donators. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we have Dimitris Dokos with a $5 donation. Thank you. We have Guy Man Dude with a $5 donation. Thank you very much. And we got James D., with a five dollar donation as well i appreciate you guys a lot um uh, because 
uh, when it comes to crypto, when it comes to YouTubing in general, uh, in the in the winter uh, is when you get really good ad revenue uh, per view, etc. Because you know all the Christmas commercials, and then afterwards it starts to decline, especially in the summer. It's actually pretty bad uh, in the summer. You'd figure everybody's out of school and all the kids and whatnot, you know, so they're watching more videos. But it's really not the case. Everybody's actually outside. Nobody's watching videos anymore. And the ad revenue goes down quite a bit. So uh, with the with the Patreon donations, you guys get your name down in the description of the video. I will put you guys down there so that you're ever forever just put on a pedestal. Thank you so much for those donations. Um, so you sort of prevent me from having to get uh, my summer job. Um, and I only have three choices for a summer job. Uh, the worm farm attendant, uh, the pine needle taste quality inspector essentially a professional pine needle taster um, or a get drunk supervisor. And the only problem with the get drunk supervisor is that my uh, liver nearly shut down last year. So I, I had to quit that job. Uh, the worm farm attendant makes me smell like dead worms and my wife uh, can't stand it and makes her vomit. Uh, and the pie, the professional pine needle taster really isn't that bad, really good pay. Uh, and I come back smelling piney fresh, except for all the sap you get on your fingers. So uh, thank you guys from preventing me from being a professional pine needle taster. Um, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like the video and social media, including my Patreon down in the link below, Twitter, Twitch, all that stuff, Steam, follow me on those. Uh, all I got for you today. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time.